I'm jumping off, is this a needed suicide? I hope my parachute don't let me down I hope I get the fly I don't know why, why I feel like I gotta die to be alive I don't know why, it feel like people are standing still With no desire, I'm on the wire Wobbling back and forth, the balance clown I won't be happy, if I'm not moving forward Then send me down, my vibration for eternity Will continue to come around So I gotta do this right, I gotta live, I gotta Parking and politicking tonight. What's going on, everybody? Lockout Men, that is me. And welcome back to the Lockout Men podcast show where we park in politic with all our guests tonight. And tonight's guest is my man, CJ or CW. See, I can go back and post and, uh, and make that right. <laughs> <laughs> CW in the house. What's going on, man? You, 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 you not the you, you. You know, you got the initials CW. Would that would that have anything? Any any relations to the uh, to the channel to the CW channel? Man, if it had relations to that, I don't, I don't think I'd be be right here tonight, right now. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, now that's that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, hey, uh, that's first, some money on another level. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right? Well, first thing first, man. I, I want to thank you for coming on to the show, man. Uh, I appreciate you uh, giving up your time right quick to uh, chop it up. But on the real though, uh, with a lot of stuff that's going on out here in the uh, in the trucking world, man. How you know? How how has it been? How has it been trucking for you, man? I mean, what's what's some of the good stuff that you've seen out here, and what's some of the bad stuff that you've seen out here? You know what, man? I think uh, overall the industry uh, it's a it's a good industry. I mean, it's probably the greatest melting pot that you could have in any industry. Uh, you know, you got. You got your boys with the Trump hats on. You got your, you know, you got a mix of everybody. And everybody seemed to get along at the truck stops, regardless of their politics. You might have an idiot or two out there, but uh, I think one of the best things that I've seen is just the camaraderie or the respect that one truck driver has for another. Because you can't put a person on a pedestal when y'all doing the same job, now driving the same you, trucks. Now, now, let me ask you this, my G. You still, you 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 feel that there is still some camaraderie out here, though? I mean, you know, as, as of late, there has been some asshole drivers out here, for real, for real. Well, that ain't as of late. That's, there's always going to be asshole drivers or super truckers or whatever you want to call them. But when I say camaraderie, what I'm talking about, you know, I'm at I'm at the gas pump. I'm at the fuel pump. Sorry, I didn't say gas. Yeah. Um, trucking, I'm at the fuel trucking pump. Trucking is fuel and yeah. cars is gas. Yeah, yeah, it's late, I, man. I had to learn that too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'm at the fuel pump. You got your boy and his Trump hat at the opposite aisle, and then you got you know, um, uh, somebody of a different origin on the aisle over. You yeah. know, ain't nobody talking politics, ain't nobody beefing, everybody trying to get fuel and move on, and they just got their mutual respect. Now, what happens on the CB and everything else, you know, that's a different story. Yeah. But I when I say that camaraderie, it's just that thing of ain't nobody trying to start a fight or I got show their sheets at the at the pump. I got you. With with some of the you know you, you know you mentioned the 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 fuel stops and uh and the fuel islands and everything. With some of the you know with some of the newer drivers that's coming out here, uh you know a lot of them has uh has their struggles and you know are 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 you one of the drivers that that would get out and and help your fellow man? Oh, 100%, man. If I'm backed in and I see somebody struggling trying to back in, I'm going to get out and offer some help. You know, everybody want to do their own thing. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but I get out and offer some help. 
because nobody was born back in, you know, and that's the biggest thing. And I think the biggest thing is anxiety for anybody, even sometimes experienced guys, is being judged by your own peers. Mm -hmm. And that can't be worse is when you're pulling in the truck stop at 5, 30, 6 o'clock trying to hit that last spot. Mm -hmm. And you feel like everybody's eyes are on you. So Exactly. I, I I, the, I'll I jump out in a second. I know the I know the feeling. I mean, we all been there, you know. We we didn't come out of our mama's our mama's womb with with, with the stitch shift in our hands. You know what I'm saying? You know, they're, they're some of them swear they did though. I, I know, right? <laughs> they got they got they got the diesel in their veins right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So they say they they got yeah. the they got the, the instead of the morphine drip, it's the it's the diesel fuel that that pumps into their veins. You know, uh, how yeah. how long you been how long you been trucking out here, Joe? Oh man, I started a long time ago, uh, but I just got back into the industry. Um, I guess I got that diesel in my veins too because I missed it. Okay. Um, so I've been back for a um, little over, a little over uh, two years or so. How 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 long all together though? I'm sorry. How how long all together? Oh, all together. I started back in 2001. Okay, um, okay, a little bit. Uh, shit, uh, what's this? 2021. Shit, about what? Yeah, man, 20 don't, years? don't don't age me, man. Don't age <laughs> you me. You say don't, don't age me. you say don't age don't me. Age. <laughs> I told you I told you two years and you wanna go all the way back. Why why we can't stick at the two? <laughs> you say why we can't stick at the two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You up there with your pencil and your abacus and stuff. You know, let's go. Next question. <laughs> you've been uh since uh, you since you've been in the game, man, why why did you why why did you seek a job in trucking in the first place man the freedom the freedom of, of trucking i mean you know from company drivers to owner operators there's still a certain element of freedom and control in your day mm -hmm. and being able to see different parts of the world of the country that you wouldn't be able to do in a regular job you know so that that's the one thing that's always attracted me to trucking is the freedom and being able to pick and choose when you want to uh you know hang out talk with other people you know um so it'd definitely be the freedom all right that's what's up that's what's up man all right so uh cw man you 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 reached out to me you know i you know i'm a i'm a youtuber that does the uh the the make the call series you know i i call up these companies and you know i talk to them and you know try to get some information for some potential drivers that might be interested in uh in coming with you know some of these companies you know i got I got people that request uh, companies for me to call uh, to do research on and stuff like that. Um, you reached out to me and 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 you want to bring KLLM into the picture. Now I did I did a make the call to them maybe about you know I'm five years in, so I was I would tend to think that KLLM would probably be in the in the early seasons of the make the call season. Uh, but you, you know, you wanted to come in and, and give your thoughts and experiences about KLLM. What, what about, what about KLLM you want people to know about? Well, first off, I think that if you made a call five years ago, I think a lot has changed uh, as far as ownership and a lot of their philosophy. Um, and I, I just wanted people to know that, you know, with KLLM, I can speak from personal experience because I was there. And uh, with any company, man, you really, really have to do your research before you jump into it. Because, you know, every, everybody, all these companies out here are, oh, we're family and we do this and we're going to treat you a certain way and everything. And, you know, you got to pull that curtain back behind KLLM 
to see what's really going on because the remnants of what was probably there before uh, is definitely not there now. They have a totally different mindset on their drivers and the driver's worth. And so as a young person or anybody considering KLLM, um, you, it's, it's one of those companies to where, you know, uh, what have you done for me lately or what can you do for me now? And that's how they treat the drivers, man. And it's just a lot of, a lot of people need to be aware, you know, cause if they were a good company, they can have all those trucks sitting in the yard. Mm. And, uh, I think one of the biggest things that, you know, when you're looking for a good company, if they got a school that's pumping out 90 new bodies a week, 47 to 90 new bodies a week, how much do they really value you when they got all these new people that they basically got under contract and own that they pay in pennies on the dollar and is going to do whatever they say they have to do? So as an experienced trucker going over there, um, you know, as long as you're running, you're good. But if you need something from them, uh, that's when the issues start. Mm. And I can say that from personal experience. All right. So okay, so it, it, as, as, as you write, um, I, I just uh, went back and, uh, and, and, and found the – you know, found the episode of uh, of uh, of the mate to call. It's uh, actually it's season season two of mate to call. Uh, back then, I was calling it episodes, and this is this is back in 2018. So yeah, this is a uh, this is a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. So so since so you stepped since, your game up, man. You yeah. stepped back ground game up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> before, and I, I believe I was with uh J and R Schwugel uh when I when I did when I did this call. Um but man though, um so you say some things has has changed since then. Oh man, you know, hey you ain't nothing but an ass in the seat and and tell you can we curse on here? Yeah, yeah, you good. Too late. You good. Um, you know, you, you ain't nothing but an ass in the seat over there, man. Um, as long as you're driving, you're good. You know, you run into some issues. Uh, for instance, um, I know a lot of people are against lease programs and this and that, but, um, I'd sign on to do their lease program. And one of the things that attracted me about a lease, I'll just say this, is just to have the, you know, people could say fake owner operators, whatever, but. Glorified company that drivers that you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, call it what you want. Everybody can make their own choices in that. Uh, but I think the most attractive thing for most people is the fact that you get the opportunity to, uh, in a sense, you know, to turn down loads. Hey, I ain't going northeast, or I ain't going to Cali, or I'm not going to, you know, Washington or wherever. You know, you get that. That's one of the pluses for being a lease driver that you don't get if you're a hundred percent company driver. Now, let me ask you this: as far as as far as being a, a lease driver goes, um, is is their lease program? Uh, is it is it lease option to buy, or this is like a, a lease and then? You finish up one lease and then you start another lease. And if you want to buy the truck out, it's another payment after that. Or is it just, uh, or is this just a regular renting the truck type lease? Well, um, that's a good question. And I wouldn't even call it a lease per se. When you, when the common person here a lease, when a brand new person here a lease, you are automatically thinking, hey, I'm going to walk on this lot. I'm going to pick my vehicle. Mm -hmm. That's the vehicle I'm going to lease. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make good with that. KLLM, you don't get a choice of the truck you pick in the lease. Mm. If it's 10 trucks on the yard and it's nine of y'all, they are going to draw numbers. 
And if you number one, then you're going to go first. You're going to pick out of the 10 trucks that are there. And you number two, you're going to go second. And you're going to pick and so on down the line. And so basically you number nine, you ain't picking a truck. You getting the option of the two that's left over. So in the true sense of the word lease, they don't have a lease program. Mm. And the worst part about it is they don't even clean the trucks. Mm. Um, we, I can remember in my class, we went, we had to go through this little number system. You sitting there all day because everybody, you know, I drew like 13 or so. Mm -hmm. So I had 13 people ahead of me. We probably had, like I said, about 20 trucks. And so, you know, by the time, it, by the time I got there, you know, to pick mine, you know, or, you know, choose from what was left over, um, I felt like I got something fairly decent, but, you know, it turned out to be a lemon. But, but I mean, you open up the truck, man, they don't detail the trucks. They don't do anything. It seems like as soon as they took a person out of it, they'll run a PM on it, make sure all the fluids and everything are fine. And um, as far as cleaning it and cleaning the filth out from the person that was there before you, that's all on you as your first introduction to their lease program. Mm. So let that sink in. That's crazy right uh -oh. there, man. What about uh all right, so how how long did you how how long you was on uh on with them for the lease? Uh two months. Wow. At least with them for two months. How how long uh, how long you was on with them as a driver? Uh total of three months. All right. I went with them. I went with them brand new. I um, went with them brand new. So and you, now, being I, that you only got now, being that you only got you know three months with you know with the company, uh, you, you know you're gonna have some. You know you're gonna have some some naysayers, and you know you're gonna have some guys that's gonna come after you. Like, well, you only been there for three months. What do you know? Well, I mean, I know a lot for the three months because I'm not your average Joe. I research and I do everything that I need to do while I'm there. What I can say and the reason why I reached out to you was a lot of shit happened in that three months. And that was what uh, made me reach out is that I wanted people to know, man, you have to ask the right questions. You have to do the right things uh, when you get in this stuff. It don't take years to gain a lot of experience unless you're an idiot. Now, you know, so what's some of the so the naysayers, I can welcome them. Um, you know, my the truck that I got, uh, I had electrical issues with it from day one, mm -hmm. and so when I tell you that I was with the lease program for two months, uh, my truck was in the shop uh, over eight times. Eight times in that two months, yes, sir. In two months, yes, sir. Yes. Now wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, yeah, wait a minute, yeah, how, yeah. bro. How is you making any money? That was a thing. I wasn't, and that that's why it was such a short period. On the outside, KLLM looks like a a great company to join, right? But when 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 you get into it, I mean, hey, they they don't care about you as a driver. Um, they don't care about you getting home. They they don't care about anything but moving moving loads. They'll lie to you, you know, to get their loads and stuff moved. But yeah, the truck I picked out, which I thought was pretty solid, um, I had electrical problems with it from day one. None of the lights and the stuff that you wouldn't think you would need to look for. I mean, because th this process and what, what people, what I want people to understand is the process. And if you're thinking about leasing a truck, especially a KLLM, you have to step back anywhere. If you're going to lease a used truck from a company, you know, first off, are, are you picking the truck or are they picking the truck for you? Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like anything I'm making the payments on, I should be able to pick it myself and, and, and I'm 100% responsible for it. 
how how much um, how much how much was the truck a week? You know what? The truck payment wasn't that bad. Um, it was the lease on the truck itself was about, uh, if I remember right, about seven hundred dollars. All right, so seven hundred dollars a week. But but bro, you you been you been broke down eight times. Eight times, man. At, I spent at, more time in the in uh, Jackson and in Dallas than I did on the road. So eight times. Seven hundred dollars a week plus whatever else that they they taking out of your check. How much of a hole that you was in? You you had to be in a hole, right? No, um, I mean miraculously I wasn't. Um, wow. I, when I when I ran, I ran. You know um, what it did affect a lot of was my home time and everything. Um, I can imagine, but. You know, I mean, because if you if you if you're in the if you're in the shop on the average of forty eight hours, um, out of two months, you know, then you either running or you going home. And so, um, but my truck had a lot of electrical problems, and you know, I point blank asked him. I said, "Man, had this truck been in a flood? Had it been flooded out? Because you know, the deeper you dig into it." Um, you know, they're pulling out wires and the wires were moldy, mildewed, mm. um, having all kinds of electrical shorts, no way. you know, uh, you know, and I just went, I just went to him and I said, Hey, listen, um, apparently this truck has a lot more issues than either y'all knew and dang sure a lot more than I ever thought I would have to deal with. I mean, cause I understand, you know, as is. But going back to what I was going to say, you know, hey, you know, guys, when y'all get in these trucks and stuff, don't just look and make sure it start and the engine look good and everything, you know, get you back gotta, there, you, turn the lights on. You got to do some you you got to you got to come with the CSI uh, light, huh? And with the oh, music. yeah, man. Ooh, CSI light, ooh, black ooh. light, everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but, you know. Stuff that I didn't think to look for, you know, I mean, you look at it, you look at the truck and it's, you know, you're like, oh, okay, I can roll with that. But, you know, it's really like, just like a house. Once you get moved in the house, that's when you find out where, where the real issues are, the creeks right. and crevices, right. what's been painted over, right. you know, how faulty is the, is the plumbing, you know, um, and that's the same thing that I, that's the issue that I ran into with that truck. I don't know if you remember that eight, movie, The Money Pit. Eight but, times, uh, man, I'm, 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 I'm shocked. Well, you know what? I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be because you know I, I was just put in a piece of shit, uh, not too long ago. I, I will talk about that uh, a little bit later. But I, I, you know, being in the shop as, as a lease driver, I, I can imagine the. The, the the stress and everything because you have to pay for the truck you have to pay for the insurance you have to you know you have to you know pay for everything and it's every week and if your truck yeah, is yeah. if your truck is in the shop you know you, and they don't you, stop those payments right and you're <laughs> not and, and you're not getting you know once the truck come out of the shop, you already lost out of time. You lost out of money, and now you in makeup mode. You know what I'm saying? Now, as yeah, yeah. now as for a company driver like myself, you know, uh, technically I'm supposed to get paid while my truck is in the shop. That was another reason why you know I had issues with the previous company, but um, but I I could see. You know, I could see how it hurts more for the lease driver than it is for me. Now, me, yeah, I mean, you know, I lost a couple of days and all like that. And, you know, I, I could pretty much make that back up the following week, whatever, whatever. But, you know, as far as you guys, it's you, you guys got to gradually crawl back out of the hole or at least not you know at least in your case you you wasn't in the hole and that was kind of good you know was is that because of money management uh 
it, it was money management and um you know i mean i'm don't don't get me wrong i mean one of the biggest things that attract you to klm is that you know they seem to have some pretty good um some pretty good uh incentives as far as uh driving for them and the amount of money you can make um the leases aren't terrible uh but at the same and, and honestly i would have still been with them if they had worked with me on that truck mm. um the truck was a final straw because i like i was saying earlier i went to them and i said hey you know this truck has a lot of problems i said why don't we just start from scratch right you know put me in a new truck which after eight times was seems like a reasonable request um you know put me in a new truck and we'll just start over and and i'll just run you know and basically they told me oh we can't do that and it's like you can't or you won't you won't do it i mean because you got a hundred trucks sitting in jackson you go over there it's, it's a looks like a you know klm graveyard mm-hmm. um you know i mean so what would what what would have been the issue and so what they offered me which was stupid they offered me well uh we can't put you in a and we can't lease you another truck but you can come on as a company driver what and then after then after 90 days you can go back and lease wait 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 wait. (laughs) that i'm i'm confused that that didn't even sound right that that's what they do that's what they do that don't even sound right so wait the truck eight times let's let's get this clear recorded on record let's on get this record clear. with eight, them in eight their times shop. eight times truck eight times but yet they want to say if they, they trying to make it like if i'm not if i'm not hearing this clear and 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 help me out if i'm wrong but they trying to make it like it's your fault that the truck broke down so in that case they take you out of the lease and put you in a, as a company driver. Correct. You can go on. You can come on as a company driver for ninety days, and then you can lease another truck after the ninety days. But the tr- but but the truck broke down eight times. What? what? <laughs> I, I I don't get yeah. this fleet manager. Oh, oh hey 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 man hey man hey check this out though. And then while you're trucking the shop, they tell you, hey, all you got to do is sign this paper right here and we can rent you a truck while, while we fixing yours. Oh, but, but, well, oh, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay, so rent me a truck. Is that coming out of my pocket or yours? Yeah, rent, rent, not give, rent. What, okay, so that's coming rent, out of... We will rent you, we, we will rent you one of these other KLN... KLLM trucks. Wait, 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 wait. That's whoa, sitting whoa, here on the wait, yard. Wait, 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 we will wait, rent you one wait, of those while we work on this piece of shit we leased to you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Hold up. Wait. Oh, wait. Hold up. Mind, I told them to get the my, fuck out of here. Mind blown. <laughs> Mind just blown. Hold up right quick. Wait. My truck that I'm paying $700 for a month, uh, a week. You know, you fit fourteen. That I just 15, got from you guys. Let's see, fourteen, four, and fourteen, twenty-eight, twenty-eight hundred dollars a month. But yet, but yet, you want to rent me another KLLM truck while y'all fit? Why don't you just take this piece of shit that you gave me and then just put me in another truck? Exactly. That that was my. I thought that sounded like a reasonable request. I think that's reasonable. Not in KLLM's logic. Oh my god! So they so we we talking about money on top of money while your truck is in the shop money. on top of money. Yep. Oh oh oh! We we gonna get you. You know they pimp you out. We gonna get you back out there on the road making money for us. Mm. 
how am I going to pay this lease, pay y'all rent, and then I'm getting what's coming out of the back, out of the back, out of that? So they, ain't nothing they left. so they taking the seven, they they taking the seven hundred dollars, plus plus whatever else. So let's let's just round it up to maybe about nine. Let's say nine ish. You know, uh, the truck uh, you, payment. You can go a grand. Okay, so you know, let's you round put, it up you to put a grand. Fuel and everything in oh. there, so you probably go twelve hundred. Oh, okay, okay. So let's round it up to about. Yeah, let's round it up to about twelve hundred, and then while the truck is in the shop now, truck is in the shop. All right, so twelve hundred is already coming, but you you want me to sign a rental agreement for what about what about four hundred, five hundred? Oh, dude, it ain't it, it didn't get that far. It okay. didn't get that far. But I'm I'm just I'm, as soon as they told me out. you can rent you can rent one of these, I told them fuck y'all. Excuse me. My friend. Okay. Well, I'm I'm just throwing them numbers here. So let's just say, you know, let's just say, uh, let's say seven hundred three fifty, three fifty six six seven. Yeah. So let's just say they if they wanted to be nice and say, yo, we'll we'll rent the trip uh truck to you for about three hundred. So that's three hundred on top of the twelve that I'm already paying. Yep. Uh-uh. On top of the fuel that you got to put in in that rental, in in the rental, because once you get yeah. your truck back, it probably might be half a tank or or on E for that matter. I we we don't know, but bro, seven hundred. So this and this is in a two month period that your yes, truck was in the shop eight times. Yes, sir. Between Jackson. Dallas and Freightliner proper. What was the year of the truck, dude? It was a 2020. Uh, are you serious? Yes, sir. That's why I said, that's why I said, that's why I asked him. I said, hey, was this truck in a flood? I said, because stuff had don't be. corrode. It had to I be. said, stuff don't corrode that quick. I said, and I, I put it in right. And I said, hey, is there an issue? Is this a known issue through Freightliner where these wires and everything are corroding this quickly? You know, if so, you know, I went down the list. Hey, is it this? Is it that? And if so, then I can't be responsible for it. And that the only thing, the only reasonable thing was to do. I said, one, y'all not going to be able to put anybody else in the truck where they're not going to have issues because mm -hmm. there's just too many issues. Mm -hmm. Once you fix one piece of the electrical, something else go wrong with the electrical and so it's like hey y'all need to rewire this entire truck mm. better yet burn it <laughs> um but uh you, you say burn it but they 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 took you out of it they they, they oh no nah, man that, that's your truck <laughs> but no you you that's you, your truck. you you said that they took you out of it and 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 put you as a company driver so no 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 they made the offer oh they made the offer they so, made the offer oh okay so no you you no, no i no you i didn't. did not i didn't go for that no oh, okay what hey why would you go back what? i asked I, I asked you for a new truck not not even a brand new truck a different truck to lease how much and now you're telling me you can't lease me a truck but you will I can go, I can walk away from that lease and join y'all as a company driver for 90 days, and then I can lease another truck? Bro, that's, that's bro you was already, the, the, you, you already, what, two months, 24, 24, 22, four, you already, what, close to five Gs into the truck. Why would you do that? Why would I, why what? would I? Go on as a company driver. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Exactly. Why would you go? On I would. I, I wouldn't. I as, wouldn't. And I didn't. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I, I. I don't understand why. Why. Why would. Why would a person would do that? You know. You some already, people have done it. Some you, people have done it. I. I, I don't. Know, I don't understand it. And you know, I think a lot of these young cats, man. That's why I want to come on here, man. Is just tell them, you know, hey, that ain't the only company out there. And know know your worth, man. That CDL, that's a that's a pretty powerful thing. I mean, I know it's hard if you just got it, you know, and you're gonna have to pay your dues somewhere. 
but um, man, don't fall for everything these companies are throwing at you and, and making you feel like that's your only option. You say don't even fall for the go to, and the tailpipe, huh? Man, e even if you attend a school and you get a raw deal when you get out there on the trucking side, they say the school and the company aren't affiliated, which they are. They're sitting on the same lot. Mm -hmm. um, but even if you go through their school and they say, hey, you got to work here a year and you won't owe us nothing, you know, if that year ain't working out like you want, man, make a payment arrangement with them and get into a better situation, man. Uh, the only way anything in this industry is going to change is if the people holding the CDLs, the people that's really running it, mm -hmm. say, hey, well, I'm not, I'm not going to take that BS anymore. You know, and these companies will start coming around, they'll start treating people better. But, you know, that puppy mill they got going over there, man, um, is the only thing they seem to care about. I know that I know that there's been drivers that have been there, and you'll probably have some on here. Oh, I've been KLLM for five years, ten years. Well, and and there there are drivers there. I've spoken to them. But the things have changed to where it's not that family atmosphere. Mm -hmm. that it was uh, when they, you know, for the length of time that they made it through. And, hey, all I got to do is say, hey, wait for your truck to break down. You know, wait wait till you actually need help from them and you can't give anything back and you'll see, you know. Um, I got a buddy, man. They put him on this, uh, he's paying, he's leasing, he's paying for the fuel route. Fuel routing got an option to pay for that it's not a whole lot of money but they route you the most efficient way man this dude he going on the fuel route he looked down he looked down at his gauge he 45 miles out from where he was where they recommended he stopped to get fuel um and he decided he's gonna pull over at a loves early to get fuel he's like man i'm not gonna make it 45 miles mm -hmm. you know and he ran out of he ran out of fuel uh at on the exit to the loves so it was 300 dollars and you know four hours for loves to come across the freeway to give him fuel and, and this so is all out of his LLM. yeah and so he go back to KLLM, he say, man, I'm 45 miles out of y'all fuel route. I've been fueling, like y'all say. Mm -hmm. I get 45 miles out, realize that I'm not going to make it. Yeah, yeah. people can say, oh, shame on him for not looking at his fuel. fuel but ev everybody has their days. Right. Everybody has their days. Um, but, the, you know, he go back to them and say, hey, look, this is what it cost me. I had to get loves to come across the freeway put fuel in my truck they charged me you know three hundred dollar service fee you know to pump you know to prime the pump and to do everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he said i'm using y'all fuel route i've been paying for it uh i want y'all to reimburse me for you know for this and basically hey that's not our problem all we do all we can do is provide you a recommendation wow. and whatever happens happens you know so it's like why you know it's like why are you paying it if, if you're not if you're not going to stand by what you're offering and and this was a this was a new guy that had just come through you know so he's learning and klm has been his only experience but yeah they told him hey <laughs> that's your loss man mm. you know there was a guy that was training still a trainer at klm Talking about having Stockholm syndrome. Trainer, he's training at KLLM. He had he had his student. Um, he had a student that was driving. He was in the bunk. Student flipped the truck. He's in the hospital. You know, hanging on for his life, trying to recover. KLLM didn't send him flowers. They didn't call to see how he was doing. They called to ask when was the when was he signing the insurance check. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, has but, what, but what was the what what was the, what, what what was offered to you guys as far as uh, it, was it percentage or was it cent per mile? Uh cent per mile. 
What was offered? Set per mile, but uh, we were offered uh, what was it? A dollar ten. Dollar ten cent per mile, plus uh, fuel surcharge, hundred percent of the fuel surcharge. Um, they pay for scales. They pay for what else? Did they pay for. Uh, they pay for plates and that type of thing. Wow. Um, cent per mile is a dollar ten. A dollar ten, seven hundred dollars. Well, let's round it up to twelve hundred dollars a week. At a dollar ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you figure your first. You figure the way I figured it is that hey, you know I'm in the company for my first three days of the week, and that's going to give me three to four days to make my profit. You know, if if, if I'm out, if I'm not taking home time, then I got three to four days to make my profit. Mm. You know, that's in a perfect world if you ain't stuck at a shipper for a day or some crazy stuff like that which is another thing another problem with the industry is these freaking shippers and receivers um but you know to keep it on topic with klm and um you know like like my mama used to say like my grandma used to say all money ain't good money and that definitely ain't that that's not that's not good money all right, because all right, you'll, man. you'll find out exactly what you're worth when when you have an issue. All right, so you figure, you know, you figure with these uh, with these lease programs with uh, with these major companies, uh, it, it, it's it's pretty much boils down to you doing your due diligence as far as uh, figuring out what these type of companies are all about, and you figure out more about them when your truck break down eight times you 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 pretty yeah. much you you pretty much <laughs> figure out fat how you know how fat or how loyal or you know or or what was the uh truth that the recruiter said to you at the time when you was you know getting recruited so uh three months i, I think the worst job you could have I'm sorry, go ahead. Three, oh, well, no, go ahead. You said the worst job. What is it? Uh, well, well, two things. I know we're wrapping up. Uh, two things. One, you know, recruiters are going to tell you what they're told. None of these recruiters have experienced the backside of what they've done. I'm not sticking up for them, but none of them has experienced the backside of what is going to actually happen once you are with the company. They know, hey, we got these benefits, we got this, we got that, and it's a great company. You should come and join. That's speaking from the office side of it, right? Um, so I don't think as much of a bait and switch on the recruiter side mm -hmm. as it is is what, you know, uh, garbage in, gar information in, information out. This is what they've been hired to do, hired to tell, and then it's up to the company after, you know, after you get in there of exactly what's going to go. So I don't mm. think a lot of the recruiters are intentionally lying because, you know, you talk to them, you're talking to some young people. They they haven't been in the truck. They probably hadn't even been on the yard to, or even with the company long enough to tell you how great the company is outside of what they're being told. And mm. I think the best advice that I can give anybody is you got to have you some f u money um <laughs> when, when, when you, i keep telling i i keep telling people that they they ain't listening bro they they when, not, when, they when not you, listening I, I i keep telling people that i had i did a commentary about about a week about a week or two ago and 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 it just happened to me personally this this you know that it just happened to me just personally so, I, I keep yeah, telling I, people. I, I, I want I want to say these two things for you for you cut it. Um, one man, um, I know everybody excited to get into trucking and these uh, recruiters telling you everything, how great everything is, and this and that. Oh, we're gonna provide you transportation. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. If you can get your own transportation, you can drive your own vehicle up there. You know, take your own vehicle or have you a plan to get away. 
So you ain't forced into agreeing to some shit because now you uh, 300, 400 miles away from home. You ain't bring no money with you, nothing. So whatever they tell you, you basically at they, you basically yeah, at they at will. They like with KLLM. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, KLLM, you know, I drove to Mississippi with my own vehicle. I said, y'all can reimburse me, but I'm going to take my own. Because if stuff ain't, at any point, if something ain't sounding right or I don't agree to it, then I ain't stuck. You know, the last time before I left, uh, when I finally decided to leave, man, I had went to the Jackson Airport, rented me a rental car, and the uh, truck was at Freightliner. And they were, you know, Freightliner was like, man, we chasing this down and we doing this and that, and it's going to be a minute. And so I called KLLM. I said, hey, so, you know, let's let's try to get me in another truck not a rental and i don't want to go company i'll stay lease let's try to get me in another truck and they told me no it don't work like that Mm -hmm. i said well hey just walk away lease you tell me what tell me what you want me to do i said you want me to leave it at freightliner so they can fix it or you want me to bring it back to the yard and they was kind of like dumbfounded (laughs) and so i had already rented already rented a car to go home so I drove the rental car to to the Jackson Terminal. Now I drove the rental car to Freightliner. Um, took all my stuff out of the truck at Freightliner. Uh, got in the truck, drove it back around the corner to the Jackson Yard. Gave them the keys and stuff, and called an Uber back to the rental car, and and freaking left. Call it. I mean, call people it getting, a day. That's 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 yeah, what yeah. that's what it is. So three so three months. Uh, would you? Well, well, all the situations that happen to you, of course, it, it may not happen to other people because they can't base their experience around yours. But still, right ap- after what happened to you with KLLM, uh, and and realize it's, it's only been three months. Would you? Would you still would recommend KLLM to you know to anybody that's interested in either going lease or either going what you know or going on the company side with the company? I would not recommend the lease program to anyone. Um, company side uh, is going to be like with any company, right? Uh, you get the lease for the freedom. Uh, I mean, Jen, I, I feel like. I guess to answer your question, I feel like if things wouldn't have happened the way they did with this lease and I wouldn't have been treated the way I was with the lease, um, I feel like I probably would have still been there, you know? Um, I mean, because when you're on the road, with as with any company, man, when you're on the road and you're running and you're doing your thing, then you could care less about how nice the terminals and stuff are because you a real drivers ain't spending no time in the terminals. I know I'm not. Um yeah, you know, so I could I could care less about a pool table in the terminal or a barbershop in the terminal because I ain't I ain't there. Um, but um, what I recommend, I I company, um, you know, to get a start, um, I'd recommend them. You know, just be aware of these DMs, man. DMs lie. You know, um, watch out when you re- when you request home time. You know, watch out how they route routing you close to your home time. Um, Cause if you live in East and they study pushing you North, you gotta say, Hey man, wait a minute. You know, you gotta know your hours and you gotta know if I accept this route and I'm going further North, my DOT clock ain't going to allow me to be home at this exactly. certain time, especially if you got some special events, you know, exactly. um, you know, um, and that's so, where, so that, and that's where the f u money comes into play. Keep telling yes, people sir. that. That's when the f u money yes, comes sir. into play. So, f u f u money and a credit card because you're gonna need a credit card to rent that car. F u money yeah. and a credit card. Well, C W yeah, man, yeah. hey, uh, I. What, you you are you at a better place now? I'm 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 hoping that you're at a better place, right? Um, hey hey, you know what? You learn from your mistakes, and you know the questions to ask. I'm I'm at I'm definitely at a better place. I'm at a place where 
they pay you know they even pay their lease drivers if you they pay their lease drivers breakdown pay you know um they definitely doing it right in regards to how they treat their drivers and um you know if i had a choice between them and kayla lm um i'm definitely picking this place all day of course uh, mm-hmm. if i would have known this place existed before KLLM, or well if i would have had the knowledge that i have now um i would have never went to kale and i would have came straight here so so yeah yeah i'm definitely at a better place i mean you'd be crazy to be on the show talking about how bad a company is then go into a worse situation right that's what's up <laughs> that's what's up man well cw man i appreciate you coming on um thanks a lot for giving us this uh little little bit of information uh about klm you you know your experience with them uh again you know i i made the call to him it was several you know a couple of years ago now is you know probably might be time for an update but um uh, but as drivers said before to you know any potential drivers try talking to the driver get their feel for the company uh maybe you know, some of you guys might come after C, uh, after CW thinking that, you know, he's a jaded driver. But, I mean, think of it this way. The man been broken down eight times, paying twelve grand a week. You know. Twelve hundred, twelve hundred, twelve hundred. Twelve hundred, you know. Uh, yeah, what did I say, twelve grand? Twelve hundred a week. Yeah. You know, how jaded would you feel? I mean, I'm I'm sure you wouldn't come back eight times. I'm sure you're not gonna come. I'm sure you're not gonna come if a if a, if a potential driver asks asks you, "Hey, how you feel about KLM?" I'm I'm sure he's not gonna give you the cookies and milk version. <laughs> he's gonna give you well, he, well, well, you well, you know, like I said, man, um, you know, new drivers and this and that. I mean, that that would be the place to go. You know, and like I said, had it not been for those incidents, I probably would have still been there. So, um, you know, everybody has make a, you know, everybody's going to have their own separate experiences. There's people that have been there 10 years, 12 years. But, Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not worried about people saying, oh, he, you know, he upset or he jaded or whatever. You know, I, I came on the show to speak from personal experience and to say, hey, you know, as long as your truck running, you fine. You know, um, but you'd actually have to run into some issues to where you see where they say, oh, man, that's on you. We can't help you with that, even though even though we put you in a situation. Well, I hey, again, man, I appreciate you coming out. Um, I, I appreciate you coming out, uh, letting letting us know, uh, you know, letting us know about this because, you know, you know, lease is it is what it is you know they gonna they're gonna put you in a in, you know in a truck that somebody else was in they only gonna do a pm they only gonna do light work and then when you get into i mean when you get in it and you find out that it's you know a piece of whatever you, you know it's it's you know you gotta figure out whether or not if you're gonna decide to uh stay with the truck or give it up and go you know uh, company or whatever again man thank you very much c c cw for coming on man and uh chopping it up with me uh you are a I appreciate citizen. it man thank not, you not a problem man not a problem uh that's gonna do it everybody for uh the lockout man podcast show for this evening uh again you know do your due diligence when you're looking for a company to go to whether you want to lease on or if you want to just be a company driver again like uh like uh cw says make sure you have some f u money now he now me i didn't even have a word i I didn't even have a word for it but now thank you cw f u money you know what i'm saying and a credit card (laughs) Make sure for that yep. F for that F U money at least three on the low end, on the top end has to be about five. You know what I'm saying? That's yes, on the top end. You know, you gotta 
if if you get into a situation with these companies and and you feel that you know don't let a company dictate what you are going to do if you need to get home if you need something and that company is not providing it then it's time to go it's time to go and, and you can't and not, and not only that Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, not only that, mm -hmm. but just like a company will tell you, oh, well, we don't care we'll have an ass in the seat next week. You can have your ass in the seat somewhere else next week just as well. Just as so, easy. Just as easy. Yeah. Just as easy. All right. Again, everybody, I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys want to be a guest on the show, hit me up in the DM over at Instagram. That's Lockout Men. Or get at me at the G, uh, in the Gmail. That's Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to come on, share some, uh, you know, share with, you know, if you want to talk or you want to promote or anything like that, you have a YouTube channel, you have an Instagram, or you have a business or anything like that, you want to promote it, come on and help, you know, come on and let me help you out. You know what I'm saying? I do appreciate all the support that you guys give me. Thank you very much. And until next time, uh, I guess uh, I guess we're going to get on up out of here. You guys have a good night, and we'll talk to you later. Peace. Get it in, yeah. Party over here, get it in, yeah. She like a liquor clear, get it in, yeah. She get it from a deal, get it in, yeah. Make it disappear, get it in, yeah. Park it in the rear, get it in, yeah. Now make it reappear, get it in, yeah. Freak it with no fear, get it in, yeah. Pop, pop, pop it in the clutch, girl, get it in, yeah. Jump on it, double duck, girl, get it in, yeah. Drop, drop, drop it, double clutch, girl, get it in, yeah. Pump it up, butt lift, now downshift.